Good morning students. Welcome to Leela Studio. Today we will discuss about the segregation process that is isolation and separation of various cell types and their establishment. So here, if you are taking any tissue, select some organ, right? From that organ, you are going to take a small piece of tissue. So in the tissue, tissue is defined as a group of cells which are compactly packed. So here, the collagen is a substance which is holding all the cells together, right? So it is like a cement for all the cells. So here, now you can see a compact cells which is a tissue. So you have to separate them. Separation is nothing but disaggregation process in order to inoculate, right? So without disaggregation, you can't inoculate. Right? So here now the collagen which is present in between the cells has to be broken. Right? So as a result you get the isolated cells. So here disaggregation is a process of separation. Disaggregation is a process of separating all the cells to obtain cell suspension. Is that clear? So here or to obtain a single cell or the separated cell. So now the disaggregation process or the separation process is classified into three types. The first one is the mechanical method or the physical method of disaggregation. And the second one is the enzymatic method. And the third one is disaggregation using chelating agents. Right? So here first one. In case of mechanical or the physical method, we are not making use of any chemicals or the enzymes. Simply by using the sieve, syringe and the pipetting, you are making an harsh treatment where you are uh, simply uh, to the sieve, you are pressing, pressing the tissue gently so that through the sieve underneath you get the isolated cells. In the same way, the syringing in and syringing out. Then in the third one, it is by vigorous pipetting method. Right? So you vigorously pipet the sample or the tissue so that you are breaking the collagen present in between the cells. So as a result, you get isolated cells. So in case of mechanical or physical method, you can use the sieve method, syringe method or by pipet method. Right? Coming to the next one, it is the chelating agents. So simply by using EDTA and incubating, you can disaggregate the cells. And the main thing is the dis enzymatic disaggregation process where we make use of enzymes. So here it is a very gentle method where there is no harsh treatment of chemicals or the mechanical harsh treatment. Right? So the enzymes will act gently on the tissue and they dissolve the collagen present in between the cells. Right? So here in case of enzymatic disaggregation, again we can use different types of enzymes. If you are using the trypsin, right? so here the trypsin is used in case of moderate cells. Right? So then in case of collagenase, you use this enzyme when the cells are sensitive to the trypsin. That means when you are using trypsin, if the cells are disaggregating and even their cell walls are, see now, after disaggregation, you get the isolated cell wall. So you want isolated cell, but you must not rupture the cell wall, right? So if the trypsin is rupturing the cell wall, the cell is dead. Right? So in that case, instead of using trypsin, you make use of collagenase enzyme, where the collagenase is used for sensitive cells, where it acts very gently on the cells. Then otherwise, you for the tough cells, you can make use of any other prote proteases or papain enzyme. Okay? So here, mostly in the lab, we make use of trypsin. So the use of trypsin Right? By using the trypsin, if you undergo the disaggregation process, we call it as trypsinization process. Right? The disaggregating the tissue using the trypsin is referred as trypsinization process. So after trypsinization process, 
you obtain a single sense which can be used for your inoculation. So again in the trypsinization we said trypsin is used for moderate cells. Even here you have the gentle treatment and the harsh treatment. So if you are using cold trypsin then the process is referred as cold trypsinization process. If you are using the warm trypsin then you refer it as warm trypsinization process. Is that clear? So here you have again the trypsinization process is classified as warm trypsin and the cold uh, warm trypsinization and the cold trypsinization. So let us see how the disaggregation is done in both the cases. So first if you see the cold trypsinization process the name itself implies that we are going to use cold trypsin or the cold treatment is given. So here first you are going to select the organ or the tissue then you are going to place it in the ice right so maintain it in ice then you are going to add cold trypsin to that vial containing the tissue. In the vial you are placing the tissue then into that vial you are going to add ice cold trypsin right allow it to soak for 1 to 6 hours leave it so after that you can remove the trypsin and centrifuge is it clear whereas in case of warm trypsinization process you are going to take tissue and add warm trypsin to it warm trypsin the temperature must be at 37 degrees centigrade so how long you are going to incubate for 3 to 4 hours right and here 3 to 4 hours you are not leaving it aside you are continuously stirring the substance right so you are continuously stirring the trypsin and the tissue so that means here you can make use of your magnetic stirrer right so when you place it on the magnetic stirrer it will be continuously the magnet will be rotating and it will be stirred continuously for 3 to 4 hours after 3 to 4 hours of stirring, continuous stirring, again you are going to remove the trypsin and centrifuge. So from here in both the cases, the procedure is same. In case of cold trypsin, it is the ice cold trypsin where you are soaking the tissue for 1 to 6 hours. Whereas in case of warm trypsinization process, the warm trypsin that is 36 degrees trypsin is added and stirred continuously for 3 to 4 hours. Right? So now the collagen which is present or which is acting as a cement for all the cells will be dissolved. Okay? So it will be dissolved. Now remove the trypsin. The excess trypsin will be removed and you are going to centrifuge it. So why you are going for the centrifugation? When you centrifuge, the denser or the live cells will settle down and the dead cells will be floating. Right? So here you will be centrifuging it. If there are any cell remnants, you will remove the cell remnants, cell debris and all. And then you go for the centrifugation and separate the live cells. So once the live cells are separated, they are ready for inoculation into fresh animal tissue culture media. Right? So now after inoculation it is incubation. Again you know the incubation must be at 37 degrees centigrade with pH 7.4. Okay. So all the conditions, all the environmental conditions must be maintained with suitable animal tissue culture media. So whatever the cell you are taking the suitable media must be selected. So now after that when you incubate now the cells divide and they get differentiated as the stem cells or the myeloma cells based on their character. So the main character is I said you have ADCs and AICs. What are ADCs? Anchorage dependent cells. Anchorage dependent cells I said they consist of anchorage proteins. So these anchorage proteins which are present in the cells allow the cells to go and bind or go and adhere to the substrate or to the container right so these are called as anchorage dependent cells so all the stem cells will act as your anchorage dependent cells they go and bind to the substrate of the container substrate of the container and they grow as monolayer of cells is it clear so now 
if you come to the myeloma cells these myeloma cells are anchorage independent cells that means anchorage independent cells which they can grow independently without getting adhered to the substrate right see why they are anchorage independent because they lack anchorage proteins right the anchorage proteins are absent so here the anchorage independent cells or the aics will be freely suspended in the animal tissue culture media they don't go and adhere to the substrate but they are simply freely floating right so they are su suspended in the media hence they are referred as suspended cells is that clear so now you can see that it is the isolation isolating the cells from the tissue separation that is your disaggregation process and it is the establishment you are establishing the cell lines or the cell cultures is that clear if you have any doubts put it in the comments and subscribe for further videos